BioBalance HealthCast, episode 196, Blood Clots, Strokes, and Testosterone. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. This week, Dr. Moffin and I are going to be talking about something that's been in the news a lot lately, and and in the news in terms of the incorrectness of what what you see. And maybe news is the wrong word to use as well. Maybe it's just media. Mm-hmm. I've been watching a lot of sports events because of the the five of the World Soccer mm-hmm. World Cup, uh, and on all the men's channels and all the sports channels, <laughs> about every other commercial, you see these two guys dressed in business suits who apparently are attorneys, Mm -hmm. and they're saying things like, men, if you've ever driven past a pharmacy or a doctor's (laughs) office or read a magazine that had the word testosterone in it, sign up for our class action lawsuit because you might get get a heart attack out of that. (laughs) Uh, And if you don't get a heart attack out of it, you might get a big cash settlement for us. And Um, you have to believe that they're actually sourcing these studies that say – Say well, the opposite of actually what all the other research has said. The so, one study that we have talked about in previous mm-hmm. podcasts that we know about was the one that was done uh, on elderly veterans who mm-hmm. had previous histories of heart conditions mm-hmm. who were given testosterone uh, treatments and as a, as and subsequently, not as a result of, but right. subsequently, subsequently, suffered an additional stroke or heart attack. Mm-hmm. So they extrapolated that to every male who might have taken testosterone is now at risk. And the concern has, has mushroomed so quickly that the FDA last week decided, well, we'll just put a warning on all testosterone products saying it could cause a heart attack or a stroke. We don't know yet. You just need to think about the potentiality right. of that but risk. But they don't know yet. They so don't why know did yet. they put that on there? Well, that just fuels because they're the covering flames. their bases. True, but it isn't. But a it makes risk. It, well. What it does is it raises a level of anxiety or concern. And we've always advocated on our podcast: be an informed consumer, find out what you can find out, be aware of the risk, make good choices, talk to your doctors, even look at the research, and heaven forbid, read it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but. They're not doing that at this point. They're saying, well, we're conducting research, and this warning doesn't have anything to do with our research because we haven't concluded our research yet. But there's enough stuff out there in the atmosphere in the media. That, that we think we're going to put this warning Where the on. tail is wagging the dog now. Yeah, and so as of, what was it, June the 20th, <laughs> the FDA is now requiring warnings on testosterone products to say, that might cause a heart attack or a stroke. Hmm. And then people who are trying to make good decisions – are frightened by that, and they say, well, let's go slowly here. Let's avoid this. Let's reduce this. Let's minimize this, which is a a good way to respond to risk. And you decide, do I have to take this intervention? Is it best for me? Mm -hmm. What's the cost-benefit ratio? And so we thought we would spend some time today talking about what is known and not presumed or assumed (laughs) uh, about testosterone and try to give you some information that you can factor into the miasmia of of, of media warnings. Well, I've had many phone calls and emails Mm -hmm. and letters from my patients freaking out over this. Yeah. And well, it's scary. It, it is scary. So I when mean, you see this on television, it must be true. That's what they, you know, that's what everybody <laughs> thinks. It's kind of like if you read it in the newspaper, it must be true. It's not necessarily true. However, it does make news. T- testosterone does not increase the coagulability, the the ability to make clots in the blood. It just so, so does a blood <laughs> clot is a coagulated lump of blood cells. Mm-hmm that has trouble flowing through the veins or the arteries. Mm -hmm. It gets lodged somewhere and disrupts the blood flow, Mm -hmm. causing swelling, causing... And and tissue death, because it can block the blood flow to tissue and... And depending on where it gets clogged, Mm -hmm. I mean, like in your knee, in your lungs, in your heart, in your brain, Mm -hmm. the damage can be quite significant. That's true. That's true. And you can get a blood clot if you're on testosterone. It doesn't mean testosterone is going to cause, cause a blood clot. And it doesn't mean testosterone is going to cause a stroke. In fact, all the things that cause blood clots and strokes are are actually relieved by taking testosterone. Testosterone actually decreases the coagulability of the blood. Okay. okay. So and it improves the oxygenation of your of your tissues. 
It decreases atherosclerosis, which is one of the risks that that's like arteriosclerosis, atherosclerosis. It means that you have plaque on your, on your arteries. Okay. So that narrows the arteries. Therefore, that causes a place for a, a blood clot to lodge or it causes, it can cause a stroke. It can cause a heart attack. So it actually decreases cholesterol. It, and it decreases all the parameters, fats in the blood, diabetes, everything that causes that we say right now are risks for a blood clot or a stroke, testosterone decreases. It even decreases obesity because it increases lean body mass and decreases fat in your body. Right. So people who take testosterone by all parameters for which we judge risk right. for a heart attack, stroke, and, and blood clots, they are decreasing all of those risks. So if if a whole group of risks are decreased, then how could testosterone increase the risk of stroke? Well, what is know, the mechanism? And they have not given us that. They don't and know. They don't know they it don't know the because mechanism. there isn't one. But they do make a basic logical fallacy, and the fallacy <laughs> a is a jump of logic. Yeah. It, well, it is. It's a logical leap that. Uh, Correlation and causation are synonymous, and they're not. If two things happen simultaneously, if I cough and it rains in India mm -hmm. at the same exact time, it doesn't mean you'd be surprised that, how many people have logic like that, though. No, <laughs> like I have, you know, I have patients that come in and say it's magical thinking. Well, yeah, 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 but I, but they they say, well, I'm taking pellets. I've had pellet uh, testosterone for mm -hmm. six years, and now. Um, my hair's falling out, or I'm gaining weight, or it, so they think because I'm taking testosterone pellets over six years, all of a sudden you're doing this. That it has to be something else that caused that. Right. That didn't cause it immediately. It didn't have an immediate uh, an immediate response. Therefore, that's one of the reasons doctors go. Uh, it's probably not the cause, mm -hmm. but the mechanism is not there. Mm -hmm. Testosterone doesn't cause those things. Well, you know, go back to the conversation about men's TV shows. Uh, <laughs> athletes are notorious for magical thinking. Yeah, <laughs> they all have lucky socks or a lucky routine <laughs> when they step into the batter's box. You know, scratch twice, spit once, adjust your hat three times. <laughs> then you're going to yeah. get a hit because you did that once and you got a hit. Surgeons do that on the way into the operating room. Do they room really? Too. I didn't, but I mean, all the surgeons had some certain <laughs> some thing, routine. You know, like well, yeah. you want to bring all the all the weapons to bear that you can bring. That's right. But, you and, have and to have luck on your side, but that's what it is. It's luck and th it's magical thinking. There is something thinking. in the the human psyche that draws us to that kind of thinking and it is magical thinking and we're talking about science science and medicine you know not science magical and medicine thinking. don't have anything to do with magical thinking well one hopes one trusts that that's so so okay the all of a sudden the fda believes this or no, at least they doesn't don't believe it, it they just want but to they have agreed a, to put a warning out to say right. think about it i wonder if there's a warning like on aspirin or tylenol that says it can cause a stroke or a heart attack that's i want i mean are they concerned about that because people are taking aspirins or because aspirins can cause your you to be hypocoagulable, in other words, bleed easily, and you can have a stroke from bleeding easily. So is it on that? Mm. These are the things that I should have like looked at my bottle of aspirin, but I yeah, didn't. Right. In any case. <laughs> so if you're looking now, <laughs> no, the, get out uh, your bottle yeah. of aspirin. So yeah, I would love it if we'd have yeah, interactive. Interactive <laughs> interactive, but we do that on our webcasts. Mm -hmm. Um my my belief is that somebody would come out there and sit and give us the truth and actually evaluate all the studies and give us an answer. So the AMMG, which is the Age Management Medical Group, which is an anti-aging group, and the A4M, mm -hmm. which is AMM. Anyway, they're the, another anti-aging uh, group of doctors has come out and and refuted this and given the backup for saying testosterone does not cause stroke or heart attack and it does not cause blood clots so does it have an impact on what what's dvt first of all let's define deep, DVT. okay dvt is deep venous thrombosis Sounds so exciting. it it usually occurs in your legs it usually occurs because your veins in your legs as you get older usually get become enlarged kind of like you don't know this, but a pair of stockings that you keep wearing, but you don't wash, they get kind of baggy. 
Well, that's and and their stretch goes away. Right. That's what happens to your veins in your legs. In your leg because and of that happens gravity. Gravity or? because the veins in your legs are trying to get the blood back to your heart. Right. So it's that's why astronauts and pilots wear G suits. Right. To when, put when they make pressure. Those, yeah, push pressure. all the blood back up to the brain. Right, and to and to your heart, so it can be recirculated. But when we when we stand all the time, like like surgeons or nurses or teachers, and and if you don't wear support hose, yeah, which hold in the veins. Support holes and, are like granny stockings. Yeah, yeah. Well, they make them prettier than that. Oh, but okay. I wore them for years in the hospital just for this very reason. But the the uh, the veins both lose their integrity. They get they get Rubbery. more elastic and and they they stretch. They also lose the valves. They have valves. It's like it's a cool pumping system. You know, your arteries pump blood to to your legs or your lower extremities. Mm -hmm. And then they drop off all their nutrients and the oxygen and then the blood comes back against gravity up to your heart. So it's like a Because it's being pushed by the fluids behind it, the new supply right. that's coming in. Right. And your muscles your muscles massage as you when you don't exercise you're more likely to get varicose veins and and have swelling in your legs because you're not exercising because your muscles are moving the the vein, venous flow back up but also there are these little valves so if it, you see a tube and there's these little valves that they they open and let the the blood run up and then they They're stop like one way valves so. one way valves yeah. so yeah and that's that's important because the blood goes back to, towards your heart and it stops refills goes back towards your heart so mm -hmm. that helps in the pumping process well, as we get older mm -hmm. gain weight stand up all the time don't exercise don't have good nutrition lose our testosterone lose our muscle mass then our veins tend to back up so you see older people with all these swollen ankles and lower legs and it starts creeping up because they're not moving around. The more you swell, the harder it is to move around. So this has to do with slowing of the blood. So when you slow blood, when it slows down, meaning it can't get back up here fast, it just pulls in your legs, that sets you up for a clot. Okay? So that's slowing down and some medications and obesity and lack of testosterone and aging all have to do or all contribute. Yeah, blocks. so we're talking about correlations again, not causation. Right. There, there's there are correlates such as mm -hmm. a sedentary lifestyle. I don't know if any mm -hmm. of you would have watched it. Having a small child, I've seen all these, but there was a Disney movie. Uh, you don't Wally. have a small child anymore. Did you know that? <laughs> well, he's not small. Yeah, he's taller than his mother. Now he points yeah. down. At yeah. Uh, but there was a movie Wally where all these people who had gone out on a space voyage, you know, and got lost and stayed for thousands of years or whatever, but they had become so sedentary. They had automated chairs that just float around on a on a uh, track, mm -hmm. and food would be put in front of them, and TVs were always in front of them. They never talked to anybody. They, all they mm -hmm. did was just sit and watch TV and eat, and they got fatter and fatter and fatter. And they couldn't stand. They couldn't walk. So well, a sedentary lifestyle right. probably has an FDA warning. Well, if they could just stamp it on us. Yeah. But, there, I mean, there are, gen okay, so there are genetic reasons. Right. There are seven different genetic reasons you can have. A higher risk of blood clot than other people so we test those okay when someone comes in and says I had a blood clot I'm not and and what we're testing for is no we're not testing to see if they did have a blood clot we're testing to see if they'll have another one okay. if you have a genetic and, and there are disposition seven tests or? there are seven different genetic markers okay that we can test for some of them we can actually treat mm -hmm. okay so MTHFR, we can give folic acid to, and that some of the that we've done a podcast on the different clotting fact, mm -hmm. clotting risk factors that are in um, that are genetic that are you're, are inborn. You can't fix them, right. except a few of them you can adjust so that you won't get blood clots. So I always look at somebody who said, "Oh, I was on a plane for eighteen hours and I fell asleep and took a, a sleeping pill and didn't wake up for eighteen hours, didn't move, and had a blood clot." Well. That's low oxygen tension. That also puts you at risk. Being in, a, in an airplane, the cabin has low oxygen tension. And you're sedentary and you're asleep. And you're not naturally asleep. You took a pill. Mm -hmm. And 18 hours of lying down and not moving and not having your blood pushed back up can increase your risk. So they may or may not be at risk for another one. You're actually talking about a patient that you had from Australia that came to see mm -hmm. you and shared that concern mm -hmm. with you. 
Right. And so I, I, since I tested her and her, her, um, as I remember, I tested her and all of her genetic risk factors were negative. Right. And so I said, well, then you're just as much at risk as anybody else on an 18 hour flight who goes to sleep and doesn't move. So you need to wear support stockings. You, you actually need to get up and walk around. You can't take a sleeping pill and sleep for the 18 hour or mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. number of hours it is. I haven't yeah. flown to Australia. So, um, so this is, this was their risk. Their risk was the situation and not their genetics. So they're not at any more risk unless they become obese, unless they stop exercising, right. uh, all the other risk factors we've talked about. I remember that Richard Nixon suffered from something called phlebitis, which, as I remember, had to do with blood clots that he would get in his knees. Am I remembering that? Behind his knees, in the veins behind in his knees. In the veins behind his knees. So uh, phlebitis is actually, yeah, phlebitis is a blood clot. It's a, it's a thrombosis. It may be deep, like deep in your leg, or it may be, it may be superficial. But it get it becomes inflamed, red, hot, swollen. Okay. And that's because one of the it's ways. Because blocking the blood flow for that area. Everything's just stopped, and the blood releases all all of its um, inflammatory cells, and comes to rescue the vein. So right. then you get inflamed and hot. So that requires. I mean, so that's a blood clot. Basically, you the symptoms are your 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 lower legs get swollen. Mm -hmm. One of your legs gets swollen. Usually, it's not both. And then you have pain, and you have swelling, redness, and heat. Okay, so, so it's like a five five symptom thing. Treatment is anticoagulants. If you were on a plane, I'd give you an aspirin. But if you were at, off of a plane, I, I would use either Coumadin or heparin or um, Lu Luvox. So, one so of the one of the anticoagulants that are injectable right. or oral mm -hmm. to to make you less likely to clot your blood. If, and in general, if you've had a blood clot, usually in the past they've kept people on anticoagulants. Right. But, well, my dad was on it for forever. I mean, but that that has its side effects too. Yeah. So not always do we keep people anymore on anticoagulants their whole lives. So usually now we look to see if there's a genetic reason or if it was situational. Yeah, my dad was obese and sedentary, and he was on Coumadin. He had diabetes for, too, right? And, yes, and diabetes, diabetes. Does, it doesn't help this process either yeah because all of the small vessels are are being damaged by the high blood sugar so that also makes that the like neuropathy it, well it hurts the nerves and uh -huh. it also hurts the vessels so your blood flow to your extremities and right. your feet are as extreme as they can get from from your heart right. so god put the heart up here close to our brains for a reason and our <laughs> yeah. you know so he put it close to where we needed our yeah, blood they, flow they took more. one of his feet off uh, three yeah. or four years before he died. Yeah, so. and that's that's from lack of blood flow. Yeah, but not this. That's a whole that's different situation. That's not hypercoagulability. That's not. Yeah. That's not a. That's not a blood clot. So all those and, correlative issues that he had health wise. Right, and that and if in case you wonder how blood clots relate to strokes. Right. That's you can have a. That's where you, I was going. That's right. You can have a blood clot that forms. Not just in your legs, you can have a blood clot that forms in the um, arteries coming from your heart, and they go into the carotids, and as they're going uphill, basically, slow down a little bit, and oftentimes, if it's narrowed because you've got plaque on it. If you were a smoker for 45 years. Yeah, that's another, That's yeah. there's so many risk factors for blood clots. To add testosterone to it is ridiculous. Right. So, um, the, so as it slows down and it gets compressed, the blood flow starts swirling and then it starts building a clot yeah. and then it goes to your brain and poof you block the blood flow to a piece of part of your brain and then you lose that part of your brain or a temporary problem called a TIA transient ischemic attack but that's it's like a stroke that doesn't leave you with any uh, deficits oh okay it it, it blocks some vessels but but you didn't, you know, it didn't Blue actually through it or something. Yeah, you didn't actually kill the tissue and leave you with some horrible, yeah, horrible uh, memory and physical memory of that stroke. So that's that's basically how a stroke happens. But there's another kind of stroke. You can have a stroke from a bleed in your brain, and that comes from um, a, an aneurysm, 
or a weakness in one of the vessels that you may have had your whole life, but when we're younger, our vessels are stronger, and then that weakness gets thinner and thinner and thinner. Kind of, you know how, I can't even use this anymore for people who haven't lived 50 years, but remember remember the hoses uh, or the tires that would get that big bubble on yeah, them? Yeah. You know, you'd have too much pressure, you'd block the end of the hose, and then they're... A little, Tire, tires used to have inner tubes. Yeah, they, yeah, they'd have a big bubble on them because that's, they broke through the external coating, and then the very, very thin thin part of the of the vessel or the right. or the hose actually filled with water and was pushing up against it so right. in our case in in a strokes case it's filling with blood and when it hits a high enough pressure it breaks through the vessel and then bleeds now a bleed in your brain can also damage now i'm not a neurosurgeon so any neurosurgeons out there don't but, judge but, me on this this is this is exactly so how that. i speak to my patients uh, you can either have a blowout kind of um, vas vascular injury, or you can have a blockage and and no oxygen to your Tissue brain. Tissue death. Yeah. So either way, you can lose your ability to speak, walk, uh, think. Well, yeah, depending remember, on where the damage is in the brain. Wherever it is, or yeah, see. there are places in the brain that are hardwired functions mm -hmm. like sight, and places that are cognitive process functions that that are parallel processing constantly. Mm -hmm. So you can do damage to those, you can lose your ability to remember certain words, mm -hmm. to recall them and say them, but you can recognize them. They'll, they'll come in with a list of 50 or 100 words and mm -hmm. start running along, and say, you know, asking you, would you like coffee? Uh, and point to it and you'll recognize the word, mm -hmm. but you don't know the word. I mean, you have to uh, relearn it. Yeah, uh, it, it's fascinating, but it's frightening. And it's, I don't, it's something no one no one wants to under, undergo. But strokes then always, or a reference to the brain. Yes. Okay. And then the blood clots are in other are places. In other in the parts body. of your body. And you can have them in your veins or your arteries. Mm -hmm. And you can and one of the reasons that you can you can have a blood clot in your brain as well as uh, having atherosclerosis on your carotids or having um, a slow moving a lack of, of the valves pushing right. pushing the um, blood up into Okay. into your uh, brain you can also have um, a blood clot because you have atrial fibrillation which means your heart does this mm -hmm. it doesn't pump you know like pump mm -hmm. pump it just goes mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. so the blood sits in an it an electrical defect it's generally electrical defect yeah yeah uh, and it and so you don't have a good pumping motion so it's not moving the blood forward it's just sitting there moving the blood inside the the um atrium or the ve ventricle so it, it's usually atrial. So it's just churning it. And the churning ca can cause blood clots, and then it sends it up to your brain. Okay. So to, to quote the music man, don't get swept up in mass hysteria. Uh, this is not a mass hysteria about testosterone and blood cl clots and strokes. What we know is that it, you can have a genetic susceptibility to blood clots that say you are at increased risk. They can test for those. There are seven of them. Mm -hmm. Some they can treat or ameliorate, and some they cannot. There are lifestyle factors that put you at risk, like being sedentary or obese or smoking, and you can control the degree of risk that you're exposed to from that. But what we don't know from the science that exists currently is that there's any connection between testosterone and blood clotting and strokes. Absolutely true. So fix the things you can fix. Right. Do what you can to change your lifestyle. Exercise. Keep your keep your muscles in tune. Don't sit around. If you notice swelling, or if you if you have superficial vas uh, venous um, enlargement, you can have those fixed. You can right. have the veins stripped, or or you can have them lasered. So take care of the things that you need to take care of. If you have diabetes, become very diligent about keeping your blood blood excuse me blood sugar. Um, controlled if you have high blood pressure control that because that's that increases the pressure which might increase a, a, the risk of a bleeding stroke so all of these things are things you can control you can go to your doctor and decrease your risk but the one thing that <laughs> that you don't need to control is your testosterone use that is not that's not a cause not for in it. terms of clots and strokes right thank you for listening Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy 
and other reverse aging solutions, visit BiobalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.